This podcast channel is about you, successful international entrepreneurs, successful expats, successful investors, sponsored by ECJ Contact. That's good. Good evening. Good day. Good. Well, good morning, depending on what part of the world you're in. I guess most people would be in Portugal. So good, good afternoon. Good to see everyone. Uh, welcome. I think this is the fourth time we're doing our webinar on Portugal US tax. It's good to have you. For those who can't make it, it's, it will be available online afterwards. We, we put it up on YouTube. And we also, if you want to see the video, and we also put it in podcast form. Anywhere that you get your podcast, whether it be Spotify, Apple, Google Play, um, wherever. So we have a list of all the podcast directories and platforms that we use on hcj.tax if you want to catch up with it afterwards or share with your friends. Now, what that means is that we're actually recording this session. So if you do not want to be recorded, please just turn off your video. So if, if you don't want to be seen. What we're going to do is we divide this uh, one hour talk into three parts. So I'll talk about US tax for just about 15, 20 minutes. And then Augusto gets into the Portugal side for about 20 minutes as well, which leaves uh, another 20 minutes at the tail end for Q&A. And the Q&A we think is super important because I know what brings you guys here this evening is questions. So some of you have sent your questions in advance to, to Hannah. And through Hannah, we, we've got it. So thank you. Thank you for sending them in advance. We go through the questions that we received ahead of time first off. And then once we're done with that, it'll be, you know, free for all. You can type your questions in the, in the chat box below. So with that in mind, I will now try to share my screen. So, so we're going to talk about U.S. taxes for international entrepreneurs, expats who are based in, in Portugal. So just to kind of introduce myself. So my name is Darren Joseph and I run a semi-autonomous team within a, a small practice called Moore's Rule in Asia Pacific. We have about 30 offices in 12 countries. I'm actually based in Singapore. I'm in Costa de, de Caparica right now, but officially I, I'm based in, in Singapore. I've been there for the past seven years or so. Together with Augusto, our, our practices, uh, tax practices, are members of a network called Fusion International, which has a, a strong presence here in Europe, which means that if there's any area of tax rules or jurisdictions that we're not familiar with, we have a colleague in that jurisdiction upon whom we can call for guidance. And because I am licensed by the U.S. Department of Treasury, you know how it goes. I'm required to say that everything that I say here this evening should not be construed as advice. We're having a general conversation, general principles. Consider this education. It's an education piece. Uh, for those who have specific questions, and I think, you know what? At the end of this webinar, I'm going to be able to do a Portugal tax return. I will do my own U.S. tax return. That is that is that is not the the principle that we that we work with. It's impossible for us to know the nuances of your situation inside out. So we may be a tax professional, but we are not yet your tax professionals. You need to get advice from someone who knows your situation inside out that you engage for that purpose. So nothing we say here should be construed as encouraging you to pay less than your fair share of taxes in any jurisdiction. And of course, I have to put it in writing as well. That's how I keep my professional liability uh, under control. So as you know, you, these, these things are very litigious. So we just need to tread very carefully. This is education. This is not advice. So we, what we hope really in terms of education, at the end of this, you will be able to understand what the general principles are that you need to keep in mind as you engage a team to, to help you work through the, the nuances of, of international tax. So uh, as I said, I'm gonna be super quick, like not more than 10, 15 minutes. And I'm just gonna talk about what I think are the 
so like four key takeaways that I think is helpful for you as a US exposed person in Portugal. I'm also going to touch on the stimulus payments because people have been asking lots of questions on that. And I'm also going to talk about President Biden's uh, tax plan, just top line because it's pretty detailed. So as everyone knows, we have citizenship based taxation, which means that regardless of how long you stay outside of the US, if you are a US passport holder or you are a green card holder, you are required to file and pay taxes regardless of where you reside. It does not matter how long you stay outside of the US you are still subject to US tax rules. Some people think, I mean, the US is probably pretty aggressive in the sense that it's hard, uh, if not impossible, to break tax residence aside from surrendering your passport or green card. But to be fair, many other countries, most advanced economies also practice worldwide taxation. And that includes Portugal as well. Portugal does tax you on your worldwide income. But it, it is, it is, uh, pretty common with advanced economies. And what we're seeing, just talking about global trends, is that many economies are moving towards the US model in the sense that trying to tax citizens who are no longer resident in their country of citizenship. So it's 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 something that is not going to dissipate anytime soon is, is the message I want to leave with you. Then you, people ask me the question, well, I'm in Portugal, right? So who's go, how is the U.S. government going to find out what I am doing in Portugal? Come on. The answer is those five letters, FATCA. FATCA stands for the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. Despite misunderstandings online, it is not a tax. What it is, it's a framework for information exchange. So the U.S. has been empowered and it's gone around the world signing bilateral agreements with most countries that you can think of uh, across the world. And what it does, it requires that their domestic financial institutions, so for example, the banks here and the brokerage houses, financial institutions here in Portugal are now legally required to go through their books and identify anyone that they suspect of being US exposed and report them to the US government. And I say suspect because uh, like many of you here, I have more than one passport, many of you do as well. And sometimes you may walk into a financial institution and you may enroll or deposit or open an account with your other passport. What FATCA does, it puts the burden on the financial institution to try, and there are certain industries in the law, but basically look for any hint that that person may be US exposed even if they deny it and still report them to the US government. So that's how they find out. Checks and balances, right? There's also something else called CRS, which we can get into if there's any interest in, in, in getting into that. What are your responsibilities? So I came up with this, what I think is a cool acronym called BEST, do your best, B-E-S-T. B stands for bank accounts. And when I say bank, I extend that to mean financial accounts as well. So unit trust, certain types of pensions, certain types of insurance policies, which are insurance wrappers, but inside it's actually an investment account. So any financial account, you need to be speaking to your, your chosen tax professional to see whether it is reportable to the US government. And again, this is simply a reporting requirement. It may not be any tax, it may not have an impact on your tax liability. When it comes to international tax, the key thing to understand is with domestic tax in the US, the government, the, the treasury or IRS is focused on collecting revenue. When it comes to international tax, they're focused on collecting information. So what that means is that if you don't pay taxes, then as an international uh, entrepreneur, expat or retiree or whatever, then okay, fine interest and penalties, right? But we're in a zero interest rate environment. It may not be that big a punch. But if you do not report a bank account, not only civil, but criminal penalties may apply. And they're pretty aggressive. Up to 50% of the unreported balance plus jail time. Yes, you can go to jail for not reporting a bank account in Portugal. So again, it has no impact on your tax calculation. So please report. Next, estimated taxes. Obviously, when you're back in the U.S., you're being paid under W-2. Money's being withheld. It's easy. 
when you're outside of the US, remember the IRS does not like to wait until the following year to get paid. So you need to work with a tax professional and make sure you make the requisite uh, quarterly payments to the IRS. Failure to do that under payment penalties. So estimated taxes. S, state tax issues. 50 different states, 50 different rules. But bear in mind that depending on which state you were last domiciled in, you may still be caught in their tax net even though you are in Portugal. So uh, as a rule of thumb, when we advise clients, we say, you know, try to re-domicile to one of the eight states without a, a state income tax, just in case. But again, it depends on your unique situation and your circumstances. So please pay attention to state tax issues. We have had so many clients at some point in time, they do move back to the U.S., and they're faced with a huge tax bill. Remember, the federal government does talk to the franchise tax boards in each state. So you may think they don't know what's happening with you, but uh, the IRS, the federal government may tell them. So they know how much you're earning and they're calculating what their cut of that should be and waiting to throw a notice at you when you, when you return to the US. So state taxes, please pay attention. Last but not least, transfer taxes, gift and estate taxes very poorly understood. Why? Because to be fair, it's not in the tax code. It, 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 the, the rules to understand this really derive from case law. So we need to look at case law. But the bottom line is under certain circumstances, uh, certain gifts, especially as you're outside of the US and you uh, get into business relationships with uh, Port Portugal-based entrepreneurs, or you may marry or get into a, a personal relationship with someone here in Portugal who is not U.S. exposed. When you receive money from them or you transfer money to that other person, there may be gift tax implications to that. So it's something to, to keep in mind and to consult. And similarly, we don't like to think about it, but estate taxes are real. But the good thing about estate taxes, and to some extent gift taxes, is that we can plan around them. So again, consult your tax professional. Do your best, B-E-S-T. I'm gonna talk a bit about the stimulus payment. So we got one uh, around last uh, summer and another one was approved at the end of December. I got mine in early January. Some of you have got it, some of you have not. And these are the bases that they're using. Once you're a US citizen green card holder, once you have a social, you should be getting it. If you did not get it, uh, don't worry. There are ways around that. Once you when you're filing your 2020 returns, one of the questions that your tax team should be talking to you about is, which stimulus payments did you get? Which stimulus payments did you miss? Because there may be an opportunity to get it in, in the form of a, a rebate credit. And what does that mean? It means that if you didn't get that check, you can reduce your taxable income by the extent of that credit. Or if you do a refund, the refund will be increased by the extent of that credit. So please talk to your team about it. There's a lot of great information on the IRS website, like how do you uh, provide your bank info so you can get it sent to your bank account or, you know, whatever. It, there's a lot of FAQs, so please check out the website if you haven't already done so. Let's see, filing requirements. Okay, yeah. It does phase out, though. So uh, I'll, I'll go to this one first. It does phase out. So most of our clients tend to be higher income earners, just, just the way it is. So some, uh, a lot of the questions that I get, get in thrown at me is like, why is my stimulus payment less than what everyone else is getting? And why have I got nothing? Uh, the first thing I do is I check their file and say, well, you, I mean, the price of success, you earned above the threshold. So it does phase out. And then above a certain threshold, you get nothing. So that, that's something to also keep in mind. But I want to go back to actually the filing requirements. They change slightly each year. So just because you weren't required to file last year doesn't mean you're not required to file this year. And just, just you know, like a heads up, the, the minimum income, your gross income, and you can see that depending on your filing category. If you file married filing separately, the threshold is actually $5. 
So if you made more than $5 last year, you need to be filing a tax return. Is the point that don't take for granted that you do not have to file a tax return. Please verify. Just, just verify. Okay. And then I'll get into President Biden. Uh, as we know, he, you know, there was a comprehensive tax plan that was released as part of the campaign. Now that he's in office, obviously it's not that simple, even though it's a, a Democrats control Congress, but still there's always wheeling and dealing. There's always some negotiating. So don't assume that it's going to be a copy and paste of what the proposal was, but it's, it, the proposal was pretty comprehensive in terms of those of us who are internationally exposed mm, for high income earners. There's, they're, they're looking at a, an extra tax on those earning over 400 K, which will be quite a few of the clients that we have. Then the corporate income tax for those who control structures, who have a, a corporate structure. So they may be here, but they may be involved, invested or running businesses as the case may be. Uh, it is proposed that the corporate income tax rate jumps from 21 to 28. What else? Uh, guilty for those who have companies in low cost jurisdictions, like uh, where I'm officially based, Singapore or maybe Hong Kong, uh, as the case may be, there's a that that guilty tax, that tax for that is imposed on U.S. controlled companies in low tax jurisdictions. It may increase. So there there's certain elements to it, but the good thing is that we have a sense of what's coming. So now is the time to, as you're doing your annual returns anyway, check in with your tax team. I always believe that your structure is kind of like your car. You get your car checked out every so often just to make sure it's going to be running well. Same with your corporate structure. You know, you just want to check it out, you know, kick the tires, you know, check the oil, whatever, just to make sure that in light of changing rules, not just in the U.S., but internationally, it still serves its intended purpose. So we have some questions that we got submitted earlier, which we will go through in the Q&A. But for now, I will turn you over to Augusto, who will talk about the Portugal side of things. Just uh, a brief presentation uh, of myself as well. Um, um, and I'm a tax consultant in Portugal for, for over 18 years. Uh, I lead the, the tax practice of uh, Grupo Ior which is a, a Portuguese-based group of, of companies engaged in the uh, management and accounting support. We work uh, in the concept of a one-stop shop for corporate uh, and individuals. Uh, so um, we, we assist a number of, of clients, uh, of private clients that, this, that decided to move to Portugal. And uh, the idea of this webinar is try to share uh, some of our experience and, uh, uh, of course, um, to try to address some of the most common uh, qu questions that uh, arise regarding this special regime that we have, for, uh, this special tax regime called the non-habitual residence uh, regime. Uh, so um, this is, uh, I'll skip the, the details about my personal presentation. I'll go through uh, uh, during this presentation some, as I mentioned, some of uh, the features of uh, the NHR regime and um, um, the presentation will take about, I would say, 15 minutes uh, uh, and try to, to to cover, as I mentioned, some of the most common questions that we receive. Um, I, I would start with a, um, a brief uh, explanation about the, the, the res tax registration procedures uh, in Portugal and the, the NHR application. So uh, the main, main conditions for, for this regime are, are basically two. Uh, one, one of them is, of course, that the uh, person must be considered tax resident in Portugal. Uh, 
And the second one is uh, that has not been uh, uh, tax resident in Portugal for uh, at least uh, five years. Um, and the, the application for the NHR uh, status is made until uh, the end of March of uh, the year following the, the change of tax residency. Uh, uh, and it, it's also important to note that in Portugal, uh, we have this regime for uh, 10 years, uh, counting from the, the first uh, year uh, when the person changes the tax, resident, tax residency for Portugal. Um, and uh, uh, I think some uh, questions arise regarding this 10 year period of uh, uh, application of the regime just uh, just let you know that uh, during uh, um, the 10 this period of 10 years uh, 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 situation can be suspended in case the the taxpayer change uh, uh, tax residency elsewhere and uh, if for some reason comes back to Portugal during this 10 year period, uh, he, 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 the regime is also applicable if still within the 10 year period counting from the first year that becomes tax rising. So uh, it's not extended, it's just suspended uh, for uh, tax periods that uh, is considered non-resident for tax purposes. And uh, until now, uh, and up to date, um, there is uh, no uh, information that the regime can be renewed after completing the, the 10 years. So basically, we should consider uh, this uh, as a, a, a benefit or a tax regime that is applicable during this limited period of time. Um, another another uh, important uh, topic is the concept, of course, of tax resident in Portugal, and uh, uh, we have, uh, according to, to domestic law, uh, two uh, main uh, conditions to be considered tax resident here in Portugal. And uh, one is to stay here more than 183 days during uh, any 12 month uh, period. But even in cases where a uh, uh, person stay less time than the 183 days, uh, um, it can also be considered tax resident if uh, the person has a, a dwelling pro property in Portugal in, um, that could be considered uh, as uh, the main um, house, let's say, and has the intention to occupy it uh, as their habitual residence. Uh, and also important to note that Portugal has the concept of partial residency. This is important um, because um, uh, during a, a specific uh, year, and in Portugal the tax year corresponds to the calendar year, uh, a person can be tax, considered a tax resident only for one or two months. For, to give you just an, an example, if uh, you register as tax resident in November, uh, you, you will be considered uh, resident in Portugal from November until the end of December of that year, um, let's say for two months. And this is um, also important to, to make sure that if it is the case, uh, comply with the uh, tax obligations here. Um, just um, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the tax regime in Portugal, the um, taxpayers that are that have the NHR status are 
uh, for all purposes considered as uh, a tax residence and subject to general tax obligations, um, including, of course, filing an annual uh, personal income tax re return. Uh, as Darren mentioned already, uh, in Portugal, uh, uh, it needs to be reported the worldwide income regardless the, uh, the source of the income as tax resident here, taxpayers need to report all income. Um, um, apart from reporting the, the worldwide income, uh, there is also an obligation to report in Portugal to the tax authorities, all the uh, foreign bank accounts held by taxpayers so uh, uh, this reporting obligation does not include any information about uh, the assets held abroad or the uh, the balances of the bank accounts is 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 just the need to report the number and the institution uh, bank uh, or financial institution where those bank accounts are are located So I'll try to summarize the main feature, features of the, the NHR regime, uh, uh, starting uh, with what we call passive, passive income from, from foreign source. And the rule is that uh, such passive income could be uh, exempt from taxation in Portugal under the NHR regime if uh, such income can be liable to tax in the country of source. In practical terms, uh, and in brief, what happens is that, uh, um, uh, I don't know if you are seeing the presentation, I think so. Okay. okay. Um, I was just saying that in general terms, dividends, interest, uh, and rental income uh, that is uh, um, from from foreign source is exempt uh, uh, from taxation in Portugal under the the NHR regime because such uh, natures of income, in principle, would be uh, uh, subject to taxation in the country of source. Um, but uh, to give another example, uh, uh, with respect to capital gains, um, for instance, capital gains on securities, the, this, this exemption in principle will not apply. It will always depend on the double tax treaty, treaty concluded between Portugal and the country of source of the income, but in most situations with respect to capital gains on securities, what happens is that uh, such income is only subject to taxation in the country of source, uh, of source, excuse me, in the country of the residency of the taxpayer, which means that as a general rule, capital gains on securities will not be exempt from taxation in Portugal. Uh, uh, one exception to this uh, rule with respect to capital gains could be the case of, um, of real estate held uh, abroad, uh, because uh, usually the tax treaties um, allow allow the taxation uh, at source so in the country where the property is located and if that is the case uh, under the nhr regime in portugal we will get exemption from such capital gains on real estate and and the same rule may apply uh, to what we call uh, land rich companies so basically capital gains on uh, vehicles that uh, the most assets are constituted by, uh, by real estate. So these are some, some comments regarding the passive income from foreign source. And um, what about employment income and self-employment income? Uh, um, 
from foreign source. Uh, so, employment income under the NHR regime uh, can be exempt uh, if uh, the, the income is taxed and actually subject to taxation at source. The, uh, this, is, this is a condition for the exemption in Portugal. Uh, with respect to self-employment income, um, it, it could, could be uh, exempt from, from taxation in Portugal uh, if derived from uh, what we call the high-value-added activities. Um, and and uh, um, it could be taxed uh, at source according, again, with the rules of the double tax treaty concluded by Portugal. Um, in, in appendix to this presentation, you can see it uh, after after afterwards but uh, uh, we include the list of high value added activities what is considered uh, an high value added activity um, in portugal uh, and there was a, a change in this list uh, for for 2020 or onwards um in terms of uh, pension income, foreign sourced pension income, there was also a change in 2020. Uh, in the past, uh, um, foreign sourced pension income was uh, exempt from taxation, taxation in Portugal, but uh, from 2020 onwards, uh, uh, this pension income is subject to a uh, 10% uh, uh, personal income tax flat rate um, and the, the, the exemption is, is still applicable in any case to the non-habitual residents that registered uh, until uh, until or before the change uh, in the law about the um, the the income from a Portuguese source. There are also some uh, tax benefits uh, associated with the, the NHR regime, uh, which uh, basically means that the the personal income tax rate is a flat rate of twenty percent instead of the progressive tax rates applicable to common uh, tax residents. Uh, and, and this uh, special tax rate is applicable to, to salaries and uh, self-employment income uh, arising from uh, the, so, uh, the, the deferred high-value-added uh, activities. So these are the, the, the list, the, these are the high value added activities, the new list enforced since 2020. I will not enter into much detail. I, I would say that in, in, in general terms, this new list broadens the opportunities to, uh, to, to consider uh, activities as a high value added activity, but anyway, it should be uh, evaluated on a case by case basis. Um, uh, these, these are the main ideas that I would like to, at this stage, uh, uh, bring to you. Of course, uh, in terms of uh, conclusion, I would say that the, the NHR regime uh, is a, a very attractive uh, regime for in Portugal, uh, uh, and is it, still uh, still uh, we can consider still uh, very attractive even for pension income with a tax leakage of uh, 10 percent um, and also uh, let let me know that for now we we, we do not have in portugal uh, um, great uh, constraints with respect to inheritance or gift taxes and, uh, so there are ways to structure uh, um, any any inheritance or gift taxes uh, without 
uh, not not located in Portugal at least uh, without uh, uh, tax leakage. Of course, uh, uh, all of these make sense if we we evaluate from both perspectives, from the Portuguese side and also from the, the country of source of the income. Uh, and um, and that's that's the, the key message that and that I would like to 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 give. All right, so now we can jump into that part that a lot of people came in for, especially those who sent questions. So Q and A time. So what I'll do, as I promised, is I will first share my screen and go back to the questions that were submitted ahead of time right and then once we run through these we can go to the ones in the chat box first one nhr and u.s retirement roth 401k social security uh augusto well we 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 will we, start uh, with a, a tricky one <laughs> <laughs> we jump in the deep okay. end <laughs> okay, so uh, in, in case of uh, uh, pension income, um, as, as I mentioned in the presentation, it would in principle be subject to taxation in Portugal uh, at the rate of at the flat rate of ten percent. That right. would be the the general rule for pension income. Of course, there is always a discussion around what is considered pension income according to the domestic law, and uh, try to evaluate if uh, in specific uh, um, uh, pension schemes and um, also uh, other or other types of savings for retirement, if uh, the income derived from such products can be considered pension income or not according to the Portuguese rules uh, because sometimes what uh, what we may have is an opportunity if uh, it is the case to consider it as investment income or passive income that could allow us to get some tax relief um, that will depend on the uh, characteristics of the uh, savings uh, and the, 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 the product the product itself right and just to quickly jump in because I, I i see people are typing away keyboard warriors so basically you i know the comeback on that was well hold on i'm paying tax in the us and i'm going to pay tax here in portugal am i going to be double taxed well the answer is and this is where i think it's super important that you're dealing with a team that understands both the us and portugal otherwise we get this kind of messy and we have experience with this because this is how Spain has handled it. Uh, this, this is new to Portugal, but this taxation of uh, foreign pensions has existed in Spain for, for quite a while. So there's a way within the US tax treaty leveraging the tax treaty to recharacterize the retirement income in a way that allows you to offset the 10% that you have to pay to Portugal. So the bottom line is no, once your team knows what they're doing, you won't be double taxed. Moving on to question two, why has Portugal changed the rules? Mm. Okay, so basically, uh, I think that we are talking about the change in the rules of the pension income. Uh, yes. I believe it was the most relevant one, and it has to do with the... the the fact that Portugal uh, wa was was I can say chased by other uh, European Union uh, countries uh, um, about the the, the the NHR regime and and specifically with respect to the pension the taxation or, or the exemption of taxation of pension income because that regime would allow uh the pension income to uh, be um, fully exempt from taxation either in the country of source and uh, in portugal and uh, that uh, according to the uh, other other countries uh, would be um, well something that uh, is not aligned with the principles of the european union and uh, 
uh, and we find this uh, solution, I would say, to tax uh, at 10%, which could still be a, a, an attractive, attractive taxation uh, in terms of the, the, um, the beneficiaries of the income and uh, may, may, may be sufficient to uh, the other countries. Um, I would not say that they they uh, are happy with that, but it at least is not a full exemption. Understood. And I'll answer three and we kind of touched on three and four in responding to one. What about the tax treaty and what about the foreign tax credits? The bottom line is yes, when you leverage the treaty between the US and Portugal in the right way, you will not usually be taxed twice on the same income you may be double taxed and i see some questions in the chat box which do hint at double tax so i'll get at that later but at the federal level and at the level of portugal tax authority no you won't be double taxed because we know how to leverage the treaty in the right way number five i'm just skipping jumping to number five what if i'm self-employed well again from a, a u.s tax perspective it is business as usual uh, you will be from a, you, the U.S. will tax you, of course, and I'll talk about the self-employment tax afterwards. After Augusto responds to the Portugal side, please, Augusto. Okay, uh, so from from a, a, a Portuguese perspective, if uh, the the self-employment income derives from the U.S., I think that that is the the, the question. Uh, 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 and under the NHR regime, the rule is that uh, we need to look at the double tax treaties and see if under the double tax treaty, this self-employment income can be uh, can be subject to taxation in the US or not. As Darren said, if it is the case, uh, if it is the case, then we, we can get exemption under the NHR regime. But it, such exemption is only applicable if uh, the self-employment income uh, derives from uh, the so-called high value added activities. Otherwise, uh, uh, such income will be subject to taxation in Portugal uh, as tax resident here based on the, 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 the rule of the worldwide income taxation. Right. And just to reinforce the point, no, you won't be double taxed once your team knows how to leverage the treaty in the right way. Now, I'm going to be a bit uh, sneaky and I'm going to jump to question eight because I think it ties into this question. In terms of self-employment taxes, as you know, in the US, you pay ordinary uh, freelancers because there are a lot of freelancers, I, I guess. You will pay ordinary income tax on the income you earn, but then you also pay a special self-employment tax of 15.3%. If it is that you are tax resident here in Portugal. And if it is, as Augusto said, that you will be taxed on that income and you would be also paying the social charges here in Portugal under the totalization agreement, which is different from the, the double tax treaty, you would be relieved of paying the 15.3% back in the US. But, you know, as you say, as you, as you recognize, it's quite nuanced. So. Again, you need to speak to your advisor on, on that. Jumping to number six, at which point exactly does someone become Portugal tax resident, Gusto? Okay, so um, uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, two main rules. The 183 days of, of presence during a, a 12 month period, or uh, having a, a dwelling in Portugal that uh, uh, can be considered as uh, uh, the, the main main uh, house. So uh, those are, uh, are the main the main uh, conditions or requirements uh, to be considered tax resident. Uh, I, I know that uh, sometimes this get gets a little bit confused with the the residence permit, the visa, and so on. I think it is important to uh, uh, to um, to 
consider the immigration issues, so the residence permit and visa procedures is uh, totally separate from the tax residency. So we can have a residence permit uh, for immigration purposes, we can have a visa, it doesn't mean that we are tax resident in Portugal. Uh, um, and uh, and this has nothing to do with the type or the nature of the visa. It could be a golden visa, a working visa, or something like that. We should always look at the tax uh, uh, rules and uh, and see, look at the 183 days of presence in, in the country or having a property here. Okay, that's great. Uh, and that's, that's a key takeaway as well, that immigration rules are very different from tax rules in Portugal as they are in the US as well. So it's a common feature in both jurisdictions. Number seven, what about my LLC back in the US or my other offshore entity? From a US perspective, they are still subject to, to US tax rules when you move or here to Portugal or if you do it from Portugal. They... LLC, you know, you're doing your annual reports in whichever state it is. And if you elected S Corp status or C Corp status that has its own compliance responsibilities or an LLC, which if it's just a single member, it's on your Schedule C, it could be Schedule E as the case may be. So the bottom line is that the reporting is the same as if you were uh, in, in the U.S., and similarly, if you have an offshore company, then it'll be subject to the same rules as if you were in the US, which would be, it could be if it's in a low tax jurisdiction, for example, the BVI, it will be subject to the guilty rules, which I mentioned earlier, the global intangible low tax income rules that came in under President, former President Trump. And those would still apply when, when you move to Portugal. So again, you need to consult your advisor on the US side and Augusto, Portugal side. Okay, from uh, from from the Portuguese side, uh, we we have a rule um, the, uh, for allocating the the profits of uh, partnerships or uh, other uh, transparent, let's say, vehicles that we may have abroad. Uh, and basically, uh, if we are talking about a, a vehicle that is located in a low taxation jurisdiction. Uh, which is the case for, for example, of BVI. This means that the profit of the, such vehicle would be directly allocated to the partner in Portugal uh, without the need or, or, or the existence of any distribution. So it's what we call the CFC rules. Hmm. Okay. And we touched on the totalization agreement previously. What about my bank accounts? I mentioned in do your best, B stands for bank. All your financial accounts are subject to US disclosure, typically. Um, Portugal? Yeah, but, well, uh, <laughs> in terms of um, um, the 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 I would say the exchange information obligations are, are more, more or less in line with the, the international uh, procedures. So uh, at this stage, uh, financial institutions communicate uh, uh, to the governments the existence of uh, bank accounts and so on. Uh, so it is important to make sure that everything uh, is, is cool, why, uh, well uh, structured. Okay, understood. Uh, number 10 is state tax planning. Uh, again, estate taxes, as I mentioned, under do your best, T stands for transfer taxes. So it is not properly uh, described and explained in code. So we need to use case law. What case law tells us is that the IRS um, tax court, they look at intent plus deliberate action. So did you intend to shift your domicile from the US to Portugal? That is a, a driving factor in estate tax planning. So the, the key point, the key takeaway I want you guys to have is when you're speaking to your tax advisor, bring estate taxes into the conversation. I know it's a morbid topic, but please, it, it still needs to be discussed because decisions you make right now could impact 
on on your kids, on your spouse, on your beneficiaries because of the estate tax rules. So uh, domicile is a very nuanced topic. So you need to speak with a professional about it. Uh, Augusto, any comments on estate taxes? Well, uh, in Portugal, uh, except some specific situations, we do not have uh, what we call exit tax. So uh, in principle, from uh, an individual's perspective, um, there are no uh, big concerns uh, if they, they, they intend to, to live uh, and become non-resident. Okay, great. And the last of the pre-submitted questions, uh, it's, it's, it's on the screen. So someone, somehow they enjoy capital gains in the US and through, I guess, great planning, they managed to pay zero tax on it. Would they still have to pay uh, taxes in Portugal, uh, Augusto? Well, uh, uh, if I understand correctly from, from, from yeah. this question, uh, the, the, the topic has to do with the uh, uh, capital gains uh, 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 in the US. Yeah, so, and let's assume it's securities because I know well, it's different. But let's assume, yes, yeah. yes. Let's assume that we are talking about securities, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, as as we have discussed the, the, under the double tax treaty between Portugal and and US, uh, and US the the US will have the power to tax uh, capital gains on securities from from us source let's say so it uh, such uh, that means that under even under the nhr regime such capital gains will not be exempt from taxation in portugal uh, uh, and but but just uh, for completeness the tax rate applicable in such case would be the standard rate applicable to tax residents which is 28 percent and non not the 10 percent the 10 percent it's only for pension income okay thank you for that and Darren, maybe yeah. maybe i just go back to to sure. to another topic that we i have already discussed and has to do with the tax residency because someone in the chat asked uh, 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 if uh, uh, owning a, a property in Portugal is enough to be considered a tax resident. I would say uh, uh, two things. The first one uh, 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 is uh, if such uh, property, such house could be uh, considered the habitual residence. So having a property, for instance, that is rented it's not uh, uh, considered as a, a residence. Mm -hmm. And of course, we also need to look at the tax residency uh, in terms of uh, uh, other, other uh, criteria when we are discussing the tax residency between two jur jurisdictions. So, uh, uh, if uh, a person has uh, uh, um, a residency in two countries, we need to look at the specific situation to, uh, under the rules of the double tax treaty, try to find some tie break clause that uh, allow us to conclude in which country the person is tax resident. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Uh, I'm now moving to the questions in, in the chat box. And just in case someone is listening to this afterwards, I'll just read it out because they won't be able to see what we're seeing as well. So my husband is concerned that our passive income, which includes his pension, social security, and my investments will come as salary and tax in the US and Portugal. I guess the double tax is, is, is confusing to this person. So uh, from a US point of view, the tax rules will be unchanged. So, you know, if it's Roth, it's already taxed. If it's a 401, if it's a, a 401k, uh, it will be subject to tax. And the investments will be taxed in the same way as if you were on US soil to start off with. And then if it is uh, on, on the Portugal side, and, and Augusto, guide me if I'm wrong. If it is pension, of course, we need to look at the nuances to make sure how it's categorized. If it is a pension, it will be subject to the 10% tax. 
in Portugal, but because of the, now we bring the treaty, the tax treaty into the equation, we may be able to look at it and to leverage a treaty in a way that you don't pay tax twice on the same income. So you, in other words, you'll get to offset the tax that you pay to Portugal on your US tax liability. That, that's that's the, the key takeaway. I know it's complex and that's the thing with working with a US tax team that does not understand Portugal and Spain because Spain is quite similar. If, you, if they don't understand Portugal, then yes, you're gonna be taxed twice. That's just the way it is. But if they understand how to leverage the, the tax treaty, no, you won't be taxed twice. That, that'll be the takeaway. Augusto, um, any clarifications or am I okay there? No, you are perfect. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Uh, next question. I know some people that remain non-fiscal residents in Portugal. Is, there, is that an option for U.S. citizens with temporary residency, Augusto? Um, well, that's the discussion around the tax residency and to, yeah. to, for the fact that uh, have a, a residency permit, uh, it doesn't uh, automatically uh, uh, trigger the tax residency. Correct. And, and I, I know some clients who have uh, Portugal as like uh, a plan B or maybe just for, you know, they just dip in and out and their, their main residence is elsewhere. So they have the residence permit or permission, but they yeah. don't live here. So yeah. yeah. And uh, for vacation as well. Okay. Exactly. Just come on holiday. Yeah. Okay. Next question. So if I buy a house in the spring, I guess that means a house here in Portugal and begin my golden visa application. If by the end of December, all is in place, my US income will be subject to Portugal taxes. Augusto? Well, it could be the case. It depends on the time that such a person spent during that specific year in Portugal. So that's the 183 or that's six months. So it's, yeah, yeah. maybe triggered. To clarify. Yeah, but, but, but just in practical terms, it uh, we can argue that uh, if uh, uh, the person has not the residency permit yet, even temporary, uh, well, we can argue that uh, until that moment, he has uh, no intention to stay here on a permanent basis. Mm -hmm. That is something okay. that we should be care uh, should be careful. Okay, understand, and that and that's where having a a Portugal tax expert helps because you would understand the nuances of the rules rather than just reading the letter of the law itself. So that, that's important. Uh, next question to clarify in the U.S. retirement income question: If a person already pays tax on the distributions in the U.S., do they also have to pay tax in Portugal? The answer is going to be yes. If it's a pension. So it will, it will be paid. Uh, you need to pay the 10% that Augusta des described and explained in great detail. But because we know how to leverage the tax treaty between the US and Portugal, you get to offset that 10% that's paid to Portugal against your US tax liability. So you're not going to be taxed twice, at least at the federal level. Uh, next question, I'm American with dual citizenship in Portugal. If I retire in Portugal, so I guess they're still in the U.S. So if I retire to Portugal, will the 10% on pensions apply to me? Or am I in a different category, Augusto? Um, uh, well, I, I, I'm not sure if I uh, <laughs> pick the, the, the exact uh, question. Can, 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 you, can you please... Uh, sure. Uh, Darren, what what person, question... The person has both U.S. passport and Portugal passport. I'm assuming they're in the U.S. right now. So they're asking okay. if they return to Portugal to retire, would they have to pay the 10% on the U.S. pensions or would they be in a different category, generally speaking? No, it's, it's the same rule. And the 10% is in case they apply for the NHR status. Okay, good. Okay. Next question, what if I'm a Portuguese resident, but maintaining my main domicile or tax residency in Florida, which is also my home state, some years spending more than 182 days in Portugal, 
would I have to pay any tax uh, on any of my US based income into Portugal or would I just pay tax in Portugal on whatever income I receive in Portugal from doing business there. So I guess this is a situation where they get the D2 visa, golden visa, whatever, but they may remain in the US and some years they do not spend more than the number of days to trigger tax residency. On those years, would they still be taxing their US income in Portugal, Augusto? If uh, uh, in a specific year is not considered a tax resident, it will not be subject to taxation on, 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 on foreign source income. But if uh, the person stays more than 183 days in Portugal and, and is tax resident, uh, um, in such case, the answer will be yes, it will pay taxes in Portugal on the worldwide income. Okay, that's great. And next question, you did mention this in your presentation, but just, I guess, to emphasize it, the person is asking, how is an expat resident taxed after the 10 years of the NHR has expired, Augusto? Well, based on the general rules applicable to tax residents in Portugal. Right. Okay. Next question. So if you have a property in Portugal, are you automatically considered a tax resident? that that's the one that i have i think already covered yeah, already. okay great <laughs> so, blah, blah, blah. Let me referral some of the services so somebody's asking to move awesome oh, somebody's still in the us they will need tax legal real estate golden visa assistance so they were looking for like a one-stop shop uh so it'd be helpful to have all these elements i guess in under the same roof i guess do you have referrals to the other services uh, on the real estate on the golden visa side? Augusto, is that something you could, your team can help with? Yes, um, uh, we, 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 we cannot assist directly because uh, in Portugal, the, those immigration issues are dealt by lawyers and we do not perform legal services, but of course we work together in close collaboration with some uh, lawyers and legal advisors that can assist with that as well. All right. So we so to answer, we uh, Augusto can introduce you to, yeah, but it'll be yeah. um, like it's a separate thing because they're not allowed to be under the, the same roof here in Portugal. Yeah. Next next question. Thank you for clarifying the ten percent is pension income only. I assume pension includes a four hundred one k and social security too. Uh, potentially, yes. Augusto, is that a fair answer? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Someone is asking, how do they start? What's the starting point? Hannah, one of one of our colleagues, she put our contact details in the chat box. If you just scroll up, you'll see how to reach uh, an Augusto and or um, both of us. So yeah. Uh, next question, and I guess this will be the last because we are over our time. What if you came here here to Portugal? And in the process of manifestação de interesse, but do not, uh, I, I know I butchered that, I apologize to the Portuguese uh, speakers, but do not intend to become a tax resident, but cannot leave the country until getting the residency permit. But by waiting that uh, for, for that permit to be issued, I guess, uh, you pass 183 days during the year. Does that automatically make paying tax in US based income in Portugal during that year obligatory? I guess so you got that? Again, we, we, uh, we, we need, regardless the, the reason that we are in, in, in Portugal, uh, we need to look at the tax rules. And, and if we are, cannot be considered a tax resident elsewhere and prove that, it could be the case that we are considered tax residents in Portugal. Yeah. Okay. And with that, we've gone slightly over. Thank you very much for your time, guys. You know how to reach out to Augusto. His contact details are in the box below. So, so is mine. Thank you for attending. And please feel free to reach out to us on our websites. Uh, ours is hg.tax. We, we will publish this on YouTube and whether, wherever you want to find your favorite podcast.
platforms. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Bye bye now. Thank you. Bye. Here are four ways we can help you. Number one, sign up for free webinars on US Expat Taxes and International Entrepreneur Taxes at www.htj.tax. Number two, stream premium educational videos at www.htj.tax. Number three, contact us for tax optimization consult over Zoom. Number four, high net worth. We can quote for doing your U.S. international taxes returns. Our books and upcoming events are available at htj.tax. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment below. Email us at help at htj.tax to engage us to advise on international tax or business matters.